Hey guys, um, my name is Sydney. I'm an SRNA. This is Mattis. Uh, you'll meet May at some point, I'm sure. Um, this one is going to be, this video is going to be, uh, what are they looking for in an applicant? What makes you different? Um, why you versus somebody else? And this is kind of going into the interview as well. Um, so I have some pointers that I wanted to talk about specifically for one thing for the interview. Um, if you're a certain type of nurse and you use certain drugs a lot, if you do a certain procedure a lot, if you see a certain procedure a lot, wouldn't you think it's a really good idea to make sure that you completely understand that procedure so you can talk further about it if they ask you about it? Wouldn't you think it's a really good idea to just know about it um, if a question comes up and you can circle back to it so they can you can show your competency um, as a bedside ICU nurse? Um, so that is really important just to if you did like a certification exam like for me i did the ccrn so one of the things that i had studied was the ccrn um, study guide and that has like medications and the procedures that i was talking about and some concepts um, i just really really encourage you to make sure that you understand it not every interview you go to is going to have like a clinical question but you can always relate it back in some way so you can show them i am as good as i'm gonna get for now at what I do. I really care about it um, and I will be excited to build upon the knowledge that I have uh, in CRNA school. Um, so uh, again, what are the things that they're looking for? Um, they're going to look for dedication and how serious you are. Um, so how do they know how dedicated you are, how serious you are? If you did research, community service, or leadership, do the best you can at whatever you did. If you did leadership, I had talked about in my previous video, have something to show for it. You can't walk into an interview and be like, hey, I have research, I have community service, and I have leadership, because they're gonna be like, cool, like what did you do with it? Anything that I care about? Um, that's when it's imp important for you to uh, have really applied yourself uh, as a leader or in community service or in research. Like for example, um, in community service, something that I could talk about was I did a lot with the Latino population. So I had once upon a time known Spanish. I don't know if I'm too good anymore. Um, but the point is that I had volunteered at a local clinic, a Spanish speaking clinic for some intake. Um, I did a mission trip to Belize. Um, and I had some seriously pertinent experiences there that I could pull on. Um, and then I also threw uh, president of the Student Nurses Association when I was in college, um, I did a lot of community service outreach. So see how all of that ties into like dedication and who you are as a person, they're going to pry for that because they're taking a risk on you as well. When they let you into the program, they're deciding, okay, this person isn't going to mess up my attrition rate. They're really gonna apply themselves to understand this really um, hard information. Um, and I'm not making a mistake, this is, on a little bit of a business transaction, if we're being frank, I will take you into this program, I will nurture you and teach you, and you will be this graduate from this program. You're representing the program, and you know, you're not gonna fail out. Like this is this is a two-way street, believe it or not. So those are the things that they're gonna look for. Other things is um are you advancing as a nurse? Are you taking every opportunity that's given to you? And what do I mean by that? I swear to you, all of us were probably preceptors or charge nurses, unless you traveled. Um, not even not even every like um, CRNA school wants travelers. So if you are a traveler, just research the schools that would be interested in taking you. They are out there. Um, the other thing that they're gonna ask you about is your personal life. They're not gonna say, "Oh, she's got he's got a wife and kids. I'm not gonna take him. He's got too much going on." That's not what they're asking. They're asking you, "Do you have the support?" Because this is gonna suck. Um, how have you financially prepared? Uh, have you thought this through? These are the questions that they're really asking you. It doesn't help you or hurt you to be married. It doesn't help you or hurt you to have kids. These aren't things that they're going to mark on a piece of paper and say, mm, automatically, he's, he or she is not allowed in. They just don't have the time. I've known people to birth children in CRNA school and get through it. So it's not about that. It's really about, do you have a support group? Do you understand what you're committing to? Um, so that's what I why I told you they will take note of like marriage and kids. Um, and, you know, it kind of helps them too because they're as human as you are and things happen. Shit happens, right? Um, so it's not that as soon as you get into CRNA school, they're going to be like, forget your two-year-old. 
Um, but it's just good to know this is, this is all a team effort. Um, one of the things they're also going to ask you, how are you going to pay for school? It is perfectly acceptable to say, yeah, I've saved a little bit, but I'm going to take out loans. As long as you're validating, I am okay taking out the loans to get through school. They're fine with that. You know, they're not expecting the school I'm going to is we're really expensive. There's no way in four years that I would have been able to raise that kind of money. So um, as long as you are okay to say, yeah, I, um, I'm okay with taking out those loans, that's fine. Um, but I do encourage you to save as much as you can um, and tell them that you did because, you know, for example, I was able to say uh, I lived at home for the first year out of school with my parents to pay off any undergrad loans I had, which I, was a very minute amount, and save as much as I could. So what I was telling them is I've wanted this forever. I've put this before other things already. There's no way that I wouldn't put it in front of um, other things while I'm in school. Um, reiteration in different ways that the school is your number one priority. Um, and why do they do this? Because there are things that are going to happen while you're in CRNA school, right? There's going to be deaths. There's going to be weddings. There's going to be babies, uh, from your friends and you have to put school first. So they're going to ask you in a plethora of ways, are you prepared for three years to put school first? Um, and you just need to be really honest and, uh, if, if that's a no, maybe it's just not time for you to apply. Um, you will miss weddings. You will miss funerals. You will miss things. But if this is what you really want, it's a very small price to pay and you don't even really think about it. Um, make sure that you, they understand that. Make sure they understand that. So some things that they're going to be looking for that maybe you're thinking, GPA, for example. I think there are some schools who decide I'm going to take, you know, the candidates that have 4.0 down until I have 60 people for an interview. So like if that's to 3.8 is the lowest that the first 60 people are for an interview, then if you've got lower than that, do not fret. It's just not the school for you because I know school, I'm pretty sure I'm aware of schools that I've done that. And, um, I've got, a pretty well-rounded resume, but I don't have a 3.8. I have a 3.5. That's what I graduated with was a 3.5 from undergrad because what happens in nursing school, your 4.0 drops. It just does. Um, and I got into what I would define is a great school. Uh, so I wouldn't fret, but I will say like once you get into the 3.3, 3.2 range, um, it's definitely going to be a little bit harder for you. Does that mean that you need to go out and do every leadership opportunity you can find so your resume is mile long? No, get a leadership or community service or research research position that you're really interested in and do really good at it. It is not how much, it's the quality. Um, so those are the things that I think that they're looking for in an applicant that they're going to reiterate in different ways in their interview. You're not gonna find anybody who's gonna give you specific interview questions because if I, for example, gave you specific interview questions uh, from the school that I had gotten into, I will not be at a school anymore. And um, it's honestly, uh, unfortunately, not fair enough um, because if I gave you all the answers to the first test and you got into school and you can't do the rest of the tests, you know what I mean? So those, uh, like I said, are an overview of what makes you different. Um, for me, just as someone to compare to, um, I did, like I said, community service and I did the leadership and I also did research in undergrad. That research in undergrad resulted in a poster at like a research day and a, an abstract in a paper. Um, those are two things that I could also bring to the um, interview. And actually the biggest thing and this is really, really hard, and I know it's hard, um, they want to see your personality. They're going to have to hang out with you for the three years that you're in school too. Um, and if you're not really showing them everything that you've got, yeah, I know you're scared, but try really hard to be calm, take a run around the block, do some jumping jacks, do something. Um, I will tell you that the school that I ended up at, I had thought I really wasn't, I had already gotten into another school, so I was like, oh, like that's the one I'm going to, like whatever. Um, and I was really calm during this interview for, and I knew it was just a, you know, top of the line, 
didn't know it was really gonna happen. So I was just enjoying my day and my personality really came out. Um, and I think that really helped me get into the school. So I didn't go into the interview all scared. I went into the interview thinking, well, this was fun. <laughs> I'm gonna just, you know, have a good time. Um, the other thing about it, interviews actually is uh, do a mock interview with somebody because if you have all of these standard answers in your head, it's great to know like in the back of your head, have some strengths and have some weaknesses and just have some events that you can pull upon, have some patience that you can think of as far as examples um, of things that uh, they might ask about to make sure that you are competent in what you do. Um, those are some things that you can definitely like bring to the table. Um, but if you're, if you re rehearsed these answers and didn't talk it out with somebody, you'd be really surprised in the middle of a mock interview when you clam up and you're like, oh my gosh, like I thought I had this and I, I'm completely like shaken in my boots. Uh, I really encourage you to do as many mock interviews as you can. Have somebody ask you the questions. If it's another SRNA and a program that you like, that's even better. Um, but really, like mock interview, mock interview, mock interview, because at the end of the day, you can have a great resume. You can have a great personal statement. You can look like God reincarnate. But if you suck in your interview, I think that's just like your biggest determinant, which um, is pretty tried and true. Um, so those are the big things. You know, GPA is not, not all that in a bag of chips. You remember that you have to be a really well-rounded person. Um, so really think about like alternative ways to show your unique uniqueness. Make sure that you are the best nurse that you can be at bedside and make sure to show them that personality. I swear to you, it's got more to do with your success than you think. Um, my name is Sydney and I'm an SRNA. And again, if there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. Two things that I didn't mention. Um, one thing is, um, there are interviews that are more of like an emotional um, intelligence kind of thing. Uh, and then there are interviews that are more clinical based. Uh, you'd be surprised how much that the emotional interview ties into the clinical base. So um, some things that I wanted to say is um, stay calm. If it seems like they're trying to rattle you, stay calm. Um, if you don't know the answer, it's okay to say I don't know the answer. Um, stay calm and uh, try really hard again to show them that you're, you've got a personality. Um, but the, uh, there are books that I really recommend that you read. The American Association of Nurse Anesthetists actually always puts books out that they recommend that people who are trying to get into CRNA school or even that our CRNAs do read. Um, the books that I think that you need to read are, there is an emotional intelligence book that the American Association of Nurse Anesthetists has said that you need to read um, generally. And I think it's a really good idea for a lot of reasons. You need to read Watchful Care. That's actually the beginning of um, anesthesia. It's nursing is the beginning of anesthesia. That's really important. You really need to understand the beginning of anesthesia. And then the biggest one, don't ramble. Don't put yourself in a rabbit hole. Don't ramble. Just answer the question and then stop answer the question and then stop. You'd be surprised, um, again, do your mock interviews, how easy it is to ramble. Um, so I did want to, to mention those things.